So, I had completely, I completely forgot about this. Um, Elliot Eisler on uh, the comment section a couple weeks ago um, dared me. Did you not see this comment? I may have missed it. He dared me. He dared me to do something that you don't know that I just did. You have no idea, do you? I I made a bet with him, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hold honest on my bet. I said, you should be a little afraid. I said that I would do part of an episode in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pajamas. Do you not remember this? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. Come at me, bro. <laughs> right? Of course you're Raphael. Because you're a sarcastic bastard. <laughs> Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. <laughs> Can I tell you a funny story about this real quick? So Whatever it is, it's going to be funny. Let my house is always at a frigid temperature because my wife feels like 62 is a reasonable temperature to live in. So I wear footy pajamas all the time at the house because it's cold. It's all, my house is always cold. So the one day I realize it's garbage day and I hear the truck coming down the street. Garbage isn't out. I'm like, oh man. So I run outside. It is July. It is hot as in the morning. I run outside, it's gotta be 85 degrees. And I run outside and I'm dragging my garbage cans and the garbage truck pulls up right to my house just as the Ninja Turtles taking his garbage cans out. And the guy looks at me and goes, that's the greatest thing I've seen all day. <laughs> I now know that my house is referred to as the Ninja Turtle house <laughs> by the garbage men in our neighborhood. Is that what I looked like when I was wearing the Santa outfit? <laughs> oh my god. You're not the only one that gets dressed like an idiot around here. <laughs> Do you know how many 4-3 outside linebackers are available? Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> a lot of them on the fifth year of their deal, though. That's okay. That's okay. But there's lots of guys available. Lots and lots, lots of lots. them. So, and the thing about it is, there are guys that either Bean or McDermott have knowledge of because yeah number one on the list what do you want to talk about first I'm excited well, I let's talk it. about let's talk about Anthony Barr okay we're going to the Vikings first yeah let's go to the Vikings first Anthony Barr Vikings have zero cap space <laughs> they have nothing what is okay. 6.9 6.9 6 million dollars they have 53 players under contract mm -hmm. they they can't they can't yeah Cousins did that to them. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, they doubled down on Cousins and said, with a quarterback, we're going to win. Do you remember? Right it? now. Do and you, it just didn't happen. Do you remember once upon a time, all the Bills fans wanted Cousins? Cousins is just the average NFL quarterback. Like, he's just the average You're NFL quarterback. Paid like an average no, quarterback. no, no. Fully guaranteed contract. Somebody Fully had guaranteed. Somebody said that to Minnesota. They said, how was it to pay $86 million to miss the playoff? <laughs> <laughs> Cousins could literally walk in naked <laughs> every day to work. Doesn't matter. His contract's fully guaranteed. Wipe his <laughs> with a $100 bill. That's it. Sit there like Kermit and eating, drinking tea, <laughs> sipping tea every day, just not paying attention. <laughs> That's it. Um, but yeah, Anthony Barr, I mean, he couldn't catch Allen. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, I loved him coming out of college. I thought yeah, the Bills same. should have drafted him. They didn't end up drafting him. They went, they went other, uh, other places. I well, can't remember. Long, long story short, do you remember the April Fool's Day article we posted on htagsports.com like five years ago? It was about Anthony Barr. Oh, trading to get Anthony Barr? Trading to get Anthony Barr. I don't remember that. Yeah, I'll put the link in the description. Yeah, we wrote an article every year for April Fool's Day. We do something stupid with our articles. Um, and uh, this one was about the Bills should draft Anthony Barr back back in the day. Oh, my God. We got so much heat from that. The oh, other yeah. one was, well, the next year it was tougher to do because yeah. everyone was 
all seven people that went to our website, <laughs> they got all the... Yeah, they knew already. We said we said a Bills Browns trade, didn't we? Too? Yeah, we did. And didn't that happen? It did. <laughs> <laughs> That's sometimes better to be lucky than good, right? True story. Yeah. Broken watches, right? Twice a day. <laughs> That's true. Um, so yeah, Anthony Barr. He's from a durability standpoint, he's there, right? It's only missed nine games, nine games in five years. Um, I like Anthony Barr a lot. Um, yeah. I mean, he definitely fills a need for you. I mean, if you ask me, what would I do if we had Anthony Barr? And I think you may be on the same, the same page as this. You sign an Anthony Barr. You can put him in the outside. Yep. You use Zoe's rotational guy. Yeah. Put Milano in the middle. Yeah. And put Edmonds on the other side. Now I know a lot of people that may not be a popular decision. A lot of people, uh, at least a lot of the people that have been commenting on on our videos and stuff, say no, leave Edmonds in the middle. Let him learn. Let him do. And I understand that. And I'm f I would be fine with that. Sure. But it allows you, you the versatility exactly. to move those guys. Around. Yeah. If yeah. you're gonna tell me that Matt Milano will be my middle linebacker, and you're gonna have Edmonds and Barr on the outside, whoa. Oh, well, I think it makes the defense more dangerous when you can throw packages with Edmonds on the outside, right? Yes. So I yes. think it makes the defense more versatile to be able to throw Milano in the middle, uh, depending on situation, and then really let Edmonds go go get the quarterback. Yeah, because Wait, as of right now, I think Milano, people would agree Milano's a better coverage linebacker than Edmonds. Agreed. And asking Edmonds to, to take the A-gap. So, you know, that you talk about... We talk, and you'll hear this a lot during the scouting combine when you hear them talk about defensive tackles. They'll say, "Well, he's a great zero concept defensive tackle." That means he's playing right over center, head up on the center, right? So they talk about gaps. That's not what they when they talk about zero technique. That's what they're talking about. They're talking about the gaps. When you're asking Edmonds to blitz zero, one, and two, he get he's just. He's not strong inside like that. I think you got to get him on the outside to make him effective. So being able to slide Milano in the middle, gets Edmonds on the outside, makes him a more effective pass rusher. Okay, who's next? Uh, after Anthony Barr, let's go with uh, Shaq Thompson. Gah! Shaq Thompson is that Carolina connection. Yes. I liked Shaq Thompson a lot coming out of college. I thought UCLA that was a great product, pick. right? I thought that was a great pick for Carolina when they made it. Um, I really thought he was going to be on the board for the Bills. Like, I thought that he would be a player that they would go after because at the time it was the Doug Whaley linebacker factory, and you just kind of looked at it and said, this kid's got everything got that it, Whaley's, yeah. everything that Whaley could ever want. Whaley really prided himself in finding linebackers in the third or fourth round. Though. Right. He's like, I'm not going to spend a top pick when I can find a guy that I know. That's true. And that, that's, that, true. that's what he used to do. So as far as Thompson goes, I think Carolina's only like 16 million, 16 million under the cap. Uh, yeah, 18.8 right now. 18.8 with that. If they happen to, if he happens to be a cap casualty. Mm -hmm. well, $9.2 million. I know, right? It's a lot of money. I know. Um, and is it a, it's a fifth year option, I think. So it's, it so costs it's, them well, it's, zero unless it gets the fifth day of the year on. Right. The so they could cut him at any time prior to the fifth day of the league year, or they could trade him for no cap penalty. If they trade him, it costs them nothing. Yeah, and with the Carolina connection that's already been established, you think they would say, listen, we'll take this off of your hands because we have the cap room to do it. Yeah. Maybe we'll throw you a six-round pick. You know what I mean? You, know you just I mean? get yeah, anything. You, you get anything you Because you need bodies and you don't have a lot of cap room, so we'll right. throw you a sixth or a fifth-round pick. So I, I love Shaq Thompson here. He He's not as dynamic a player as an Anthony Barr, but yeah. if you can't get Barr, Thompson's Shaq Thompson guy, makes a lot of sense. Like he's only 24. So, oh. I mean, you're, you're snagging a guy and getting the opportunity because as soon as the Bills acquire him, they could start talking contract extension and negotiations. So, yes. Because he's on the fifth-year deal. Um, that doesn't exclude the Bills from being able to talk to him. It's not like the franchise tag where once it's locked, you can't sign an extension during the season. It's, yeah. it's not like that at all. So the Bills would be able to lock him in uh, down the road if, if they think. And, again, this all depends on – you know, did is it was Shaq Thompson, a guy that Bean, when he was in Carolina, stood on the table for and said, "You gotta get this kid." You might still be in love with him. You don't Could know. Be. All right, next up, Vic Beasley from Atlanta. Vic Beasley, I love Vic Beasley. Why? I love Vic Beasley because well, this is dude. He's an outside linebacker, but mainly plays with his hand in the dirt. Yeah. Okay. If you're unsure about Shaq Lawson, Trent Murphy. Is not giving you the production that you want. You know what it also offers me? Say you keep Shaq lost. Imagine this scenario, okay? Imagine this scenario. It's like a third and long, okay? 
you, you've been rotating your ends and everything. I just going to sound insane, but I just, when I, as soon as I saw Vic Beasley, here's what I saw. You have, <clears throat> you rush five. Mm -hmm. You have Jerry Hughes. You have Edmonds coming off the corner on that side. You put Shaq uh -huh. Lawson and uh, Lorenzo Alexander as the tackles. You put Vic Beasley on the other side. They better be third and 50 because they ain't stopping the run. <laughs> well, no, not, no. <laughs> but my point is this. Those five coming after you, you know yeah. how much speed, That's a lot of speed and nastiness is coming you at you right there? Quick. And uh, just, just for the simple fact is he has played with his hand in the dirt. What are we talking about? We're talking about versatility. Mm -hmm. Vic Beasley, did I put his special teams numbers on there? No, well? no, it's right. durability. He's only missed three games the last four years. Three games the last four years. It's, it's phenomenal. He's, he's a guy that Atlanta cannot afford. Well, Vic Beasley, they I think. They cannot afford Vic Beasley. Vic Beasley, I think, is the big difference when you talk about fifth-year options between a top pick and a not top pick, right? Because you have uh, Shaq Thompson is 9.2 for a cap number, fifth-year mm -hmm. option. Yep. Vic Beasley, 12.8. Yeah, it's that's a big number. We, we talk about the top 10 versus yeah, the, the 11, 11 through 32. 32. Yeah. yeah, that fifth year option. That's a big, and the same position, $3 million is a lot of money mm -hmm. based They're off of where you're the drafted. the same year. Yeah, exactly. That's why. Yeah. You know, so that's that's a big difference. 12.8 is a lot of money to have to get somebody to take. There's not many takers who are going to take Vic Beasley at the production that he's had for $12 million on a one year. Atlanta year. cannot, they are. They're not in cap jail. They're in cap penitentiary. Like they're 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 in so much trouble. As they far went, as their they went to the Jerry Jones School of Cap Management. <laughs> I tell you what, uh, they really cannot. They can't. Afford they can't him. afford him at all. Uh, if they keep him on the roster, to try to renegotiate him for next year, uh, they're just they're going to they're just There's strapped problems. this year. Um, and they don't really have. He's like the only guy on that roster that could be a cap casualty where they would save money with no dead money bond. Yeah, um, yeah, because so, it's a fully guaranteed contract. So what are you talking about? And I know a lot of people average. are like saying, oh, well, a lot of these fifth-year guys, the teams usually just sign them mm -hmm. into extension or they'll backload a little bit of the contract so they can sign the guy and keep him in town and all other stuff. We're and, talking about defensive players, though. This, the reason we're talking about defensive players is the fact that this is such a defensive-heavy draft, and the cheapest option is to get a guy during the draft. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're talking about... Um, you know, a first round player costing less than $3 million for their season. Like, you're going to save $9 million just by letting Vic Beasley walk away. But Vic Beasley is an asset, so can you let him walk away, right? If you're Atlanta, can you let that walk? No, you're going to try and find somebody to dance with to take that contract. Mm. But, but, um, everybody knows that they're to the wall. They don't have any options. They can't resign him. No. Um, and one thing that happens, you know, when. Like, players like to renegotiate their contracts. They really do. They like to renegotiate because they get immediate money right away. Yeah, the Sure, Vic Beasley's yeah. contract is 12.8 guaranteed, or he could sign a three-year extension with a $20 million signing bonus, and instead of making 12.8 this year, now he gets $20 million signing bonus plus his salary for the year. He's, he's a happy camper. Exactly. Like, so. like I said, these, these are things that – these are just – players that I looked at I looked at the salary caps I looked at the state of the team mm -hmm. and I looked at the players that I mean I would love to have a Buffalo well any of these manifests I'm not an insider well no. the, I don't well, know if they will we but haven't got to my favorite one yet well no well, I, I wanted to put this out there because it happens to be one of the things where you guys are insane like I'm not insane I would love these players to be in Buffalo and the teams are going to struggle to be under the cap so this is these are these are moves that could happen. Right. My favorite. Wait. What, where, what, what team? Tampa. This is my favorite one. Tampa is in a bad way. They're in a bad way. They don't know if they have a quarterback. Nope. Right. They don't have any pass rush. Their nope. line is old. Their defensive line is old. You got JPP. You got Gerald McCoy. Like they're both mm -hmm. thirty. They're old. I uh, just drafted Vita Vey last year. Yep. My favorite player on this list, Levante David. He's 29, but boy, do I love Levante David. I love Levante David. He did. I just remember he used to have a couple boneheaded uh, penalties that cost them Tampa a couple games when he was younger. Yeah. Against the Jets, I believe it was. I think you call that intensity. Oh, like Jerry Hughes hasn't had a bunch of those, please. Come on now. Come on now. But Jerry Hughes is from a previous regime. Previous regime. So is Levante. So is Levante David, right. What I love about Levante David is, and a lot of those guys on that list, they're they're dual players. I think Levante David plays like what twenty percent of special team snaps, mm -hmm. so he satisfies 
he's a, he's a Bean McDermott guy. You're, right. you're satisfying multiple positions. Uh, I think they saved like $10 million. Yeah, his contract's 9.7. So again, the okay. team's looking to get rid of him, right? So yeah. that could be via cut, so he could be a free agent. This could be via trade. Um, anything is on the board when it comes to Tampa this season. They are open for business. Because oh, yeah. they got to make some moves. They don't have a choice. And they got... Um, even though Arians does like older players. Yeah, he does. He does happen to like older, experienced yeah. players. Levante David, uh, they need they need cap room and they need cap money. He could be a cap casualty. 29 years old. You put him on the other side of, of uh, Milano or Edmonds in, in that system. He has experience from being in that division that Bean and McDermott know about this guy. Right. Um, he could have been a target for them. You never know. Sure. So I, I, I love him on multiple levels just like you do. I mean, I think he's a guy who, out of the, out of the players we mentioned, is probably the most successful. We can get. Um, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I love Levante, David. I think he brings, um, you know, I think he brings the ability to do everything, right? He's pretty good against the pass. He's pretty good against the run. Is he the youngest player? No, he's actually the oldest player that we've talked about out of all these outside mm-hmm. linebackers. But all under 30. But all under 30. <laughs> all under 30. Um, and can you afford him? Yeah, absolutely. You can afford anybody at this point. Right? Yeah. If Levante David were a free agent versus these other guys, Levante David would be more of a target for me because he brings a little bit more experience in the linebacker room. Like we've talked about Lorenzo Alexander, but I think a lot of us are kind of under the assumption that Alexander's going to play a lot with his hand in the dirt this year after watching him try and play inside uh, and, and, and cover and in coverage at the end of last season. That lateral movement is an excellent, right? He's, I mean, he came to Buffalo as an older player with not a lot of tread on the tires. But I think Lorenzo is most effective moving forward and outside the side. You yes. know, so you put his hand in the dirt, that gives you that rotation between Hughes and, you know, it basically handcuffs Trent Murphy if he's going to be healthy or not. So, um, you know, I'm Levante David's the one that I want out of all these guys. I love Levante David. Love him, love him, love him. So is that where the Bills could go? I mean... Sure, right? They can go sure. anywhere, these guys. But remember, these guys are already currently under contract with these teams, and these are teams that are, have cap problems. So right. Could they could they talk with these teams? I mean, they have familiarity within the division. When Bean and McDermott were there, they could easily just make a phone call and be like, hey, listen, we know you need – you got to solve your cap problem. We have picks we can give you. There's no way the Bills are taking all ten of these picks that they have right now. No. There's no way. Oh, absolutely no way. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of um, addition by subtraction of draft picks. This team, I think, needs to get a little bit older. And you don't hear that often, right? When you hear, oh, yeah, this team's got to get a little older. No, yeah. they, they need this team needs to get a little older. More experienced. Right. And um, Levante David, from a scheme standpoint, out of curiosity. There's a reason they call it the Tampa 2. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's where I was going with that. That's where I was going with that. 